thanks for checking in i am um so it's tuesday evening so i had all day yesterday and today at the dye studio so monday tuesdays tend to be my dye studio days um back in the shop tomorrow um so i'm just sitting upstairs and i'm just sticking labels on to the yarn and i thought while i'm doing that i come and have a chat so yes monday tuesday as i said i'm at the studio um and i've had a couple of really productive days actually which is just really lovely sometimes um so monday morning i was down there and then i came home for lunch and then in the afternoon i took the puppy I mean, I shouldn't really call her a puppy anymore. She's eight months old now. But I was saying to my husband yesterday, um, I will probably still refer to her as my puppy in two years' time. <laughs> and that's okay. Um, but yeah, so it's worked really well. I don't know if I said this before. Um, obviously, I was struggling a little bit with going down there um, on a Tuesday because my husband that's the one day my husband tends to go into the office. Um, the difference in between that I just think that's really striking in a way um, what I've done is I have um, most of the colorways I had dyed on two bases um, just to give people a bit more option but yeah so I couldn't really go to the dye studio on a Tuesday because I had the puppy at home because my husband's that is the one day my husband has to go to the office um, but she is crate trained at home and I know a lot of people don't agree with that um, it's been a lifesaver for us and she she loves it in there you know she goes in her crate and she just goes to sleep it's kind of her safe space um, but, so I invested in a separate in, in a Kind of bigger crate so the one we've got at home also fits into the car so it has a sloped front that when you kind of close the boot so we just have a standard big crate um in the studio and i find i found a really good little corner to put her and i can kind of cover her up and stuff but um so i started taking her down there and she's just been so good um you know we if anything she actually has more exciting days when we go to the studio i think because she gets her normal walk in the morning and then we come home for breakfast and then obviously she gets another walk to go to the studio and i quite often kind of take the longer route to give her a bit more exercise and like let her have a good sniff around and stuff um and honestly we get there and she's just like she walks straight into her she walks straight into her crate um and she doesn't want to know me kind of she just she just goes to sleep she kind of likes to watch um but there comes a point when you can tell she's sort of like trying to go to sleep and i just cover her up and she's quite happy down there so that that's been working really well so i was down there i had her with me monday afternoon and then i had her with me this morning um so they it, it was a couple of really productive productive days in a way um but yes so yesterday I was down there and I'm doing a kind of a color matching course at the moment um, with a bunch of people well we're all kind of across the world really um, the majority of people are in the states because that's where the tutor is located but then there is someone in Australia there's a couple of us in the UK certainly one this one lady who's she's based in Edinburgh um, and um, and it's all about kind of going not back to basics but it's how to create your own kind of unique colors from primary colors only more or less primary colors plus kind of black or brown to get kind of um, to get different values i get to make it like lighter darker whatever um and as part of that we're getting like little challenges and one of my challenges and i was running a little bit behind was we had been sent this little like a digital image of 
this green sample square and the idea was just to just by looking at it to dye that um, and obviously I know that blue and yellow makes green so that's what I went for um, but it's kind of getting you know is it a little bit more blue or is it a little bit more yellow and just how much do I need for 20 grams of yarn because I dye on 20 gram mini skeins you know how deep do I want that color to be you know obviously I didn't want it to be a full color coverage I didn't want to be like didn't even I didn't even think it was 50 percent it was probably a bit lower than that um yes yeah, so we had been sent the square and um so we were supposed to just do that one one attempt and I was cheeky and did two because I knew that the first one wasn't going to work immediately but I wanted a starting point um, so this was my first one and interestingly I mean the reason that I just went straight in for that is because it's actually really similar to the jumper I'm wearing at the moment that bit of color work is very very similar to this very um turquoise-ish anyway this lovely um bright green and I mean good job the fashion police is not ours today so I'm wearing my rather crazy dungarees with my color work jumper so you can't miss me today um so I'd done this and then I had done big oops because I knew that it was going to be too much as soon as I kind of put it in and then more or less half the amount of dye and added a little bit of brown to kind of bring the color down and it's it still wasn't quite but it was just to get a bit of get a bit of a, um, a benchmark I guess of you know how well you can see sort of depths of shade and um, values of a yarn just by looking at something um, but then with a bit of guidance um, this is the third color I came up with and it's much more like a sage green I guess and that is much much closer to the digital swatch I had been sent so I'm really happy with that so I need to wind some of this off onto little bobbins um, and record the dye recipes properly because this ended up so when I when I did this and this is how I do my dyeing I you know I like round numbers so it was a bit like five milliliter of one color and one of the other and then I measured the same amount and kind of halved it and added one millimeter of brown or something to actually get to this color it was much much more precise and and this is this is kind of where this course is kind of heading um I was measuring something like 3.78 milliliters of one color and 2.78 of another and one point six point something of the other um so there was a lot of detailed note taking and um kind of diluting stuff to get that percentage right to then be able to then actually be able to measure it because how do you measure you know 0.89 of a millimeter milliliter um anyway we got there but i nearly had a bit of a disaster because i had i had done all my calculations at home and i had written them down and i went to the studio and i have a little pin board and i put it on there so i had it in front of me at all times and then i mixed up my three colors so i had like color one two three um and i had three jars of dye in front of me one two three and i checked how much I needed I syringed that out and I had the dye bath behind me went and put that into the water and as I came back and looked at the dye I had just used and I looked up again and I just thought oh I just thought I haven't got time to be faffing around with stuff like this at the moment when I'm less than two weeks from a show I should just be like getting on with dyeing my yarn but that's the way I like to do things um because why not you know why not um but what had happened I had written down the colors in one order but I had lined them physically up in a different order so when I looked at color number one I grabbed jar number one next to me and that was the wrong color and my heart just sank and I just thought oh, 
can't be starting from scratch, I haven't got time for this. But then actually, when I checked all the numbers, it turned out that had I picked the right colour, it, it wasn't, you know, anyway, I could, I could fix the mistake because actually the colour that I had syringed, like the yellow I had syringed out, I had used a lower amount than I actually needed. So I could recalculate that and then add the extra, um, I could add the extra amount in. So I could just about rescue that, but oh, bloody hell. I mean, this is just what it's like sometimes. And this is how accidents happen when you have jars in front of you, you know, and I had them in the shops before when they look so similar sometimes in the dye jar. And if you haven't got, you have all good intentions of like marking them all up or like having a label on them or something, or um, at least have the dye jar with, with the powder behind it. So you know which color it is or something. And sometimes things just don't work out that way, but you pick something up and you pour it and you realize it's the wrong color. So black is a black is a like some black and some blues are really they look purple, so the black has a real purple tinge to it when you pour it on. In fact I was dyeing something sort of in a light grey earlier and I and I, I knew it was black because that was the only jar I had left. But when I poured it in I was just like mm, that was just that moment when I thought, oh no, it's purple. But it wasn't, it's fine. It's come out in the shade of grey that I wanted it to be. Um, but so that happened on Monday morning and I just thought like, oh, flippy heck, just, you know, get on with the stuff that you need to do. Um, and then as I was setting up all the dye pans behind me, I picked the citric acid container out of the corner and I kind of went, oh, that feels a bit light. And of course, I'm effectively now out of citric acid which was fine because I, so for the kind of dyeing I've been doing, um, sorry, I'm trying to stick labels onto yarn at the same time. Um, I've been, so I reuse my dye baths a lot, especially if I know that I do like, um, you know, a couple of runs over a few days. Um, ta -da! Um, so I can reuse that quite a lot. You know, as long as the water's clear, that's absolutely fine. It's not a problem. So I could still kind of finish the jobs I had to do that day and yesterday. But the stuff I have left that I want to dye is... I dye in a slightly different way. So I don't want acid in there until much later. So I can not reuse the dye pans um, that are kind of still sitting down there which is a bit of a nuisance so and I know exactly what has happened because I think this happened to me at Yarndale that I had run out but just like anything else the price of citric acid at the time had kind of gone through the roof and I wasn't really prepared at the time to put a big order in for more so I went to Wilkinson's and you can buy these little they are either 250 or 500 grams of citric acid. You can just pick them up for a couple of quid or so. And they're just perfect in an emergency. It's just in the cleaning aisle. Um, so I, I think I had bought two or three of them and I just poured them into that bigger container I have. But then the container is now empty again. So you will probably find me in Wilkinson's tomorrow buying some more citric acid to finish this dye job. Um, so there's lots of labeling so all the stuff like i've twisted most of my stuff um that is stuff i brought home today and you may have seen that on the washing line in a little video earlier um i have put that on the i put that on the washing line so i brought it home from the studio and it was just still a little bit damp but it was kind of nice and sunny and a bit of breezy outside so i'll put it outside and then i have to admit i was really quite tired by the time I came home and I may have fallen asleep on the sofa for half an hour and I woke up to heavy rain um and it literally had just started but so I'm running out trying to get my yarn off the line and it's all clipped individually with um 
with reusable cable ties so it's not just as like I couldn't just lift it off I had to undo each individual cable tie um, and there were 20 of them so I had to rescue that so I need to check if that's dry or not so I can I probably can't even twist that until tomorrow but that's okay there's lots of labeling I can do um, but yeah speaking of labeling so I'm currently making my own labels I just need to grab some more yarn if I can get there because this box is absolutely everywhere um, full of stock um, to take with me um, I don't even know what I want to grab so my labels I kind of do myself at home and I had hoped to kind of have a, a local printer on board by now but god it was just like I'd met them at an event a few weeks ago and we had some email correspondence and exchanged some messages over social media and I'd sent them some files and I had given them a yarn sleeve and kind of explained you know what I want I wanted the logo potentially changing a different type of printing and obviously I want my corners rounded because at the moment I do that all by hand with a little hole punch I, I mean I kid you not it's time consuming um but they're just not getting back to me and I've chased chased them a couple of times and um I said oh yeah we'll get that across to you and then I just don't hear anything and you know I know I'm not going to be one of their biggest clients and that's fine um but you know just tell me if you're like not interested or like I don't know I just you know I'm happy to take my money elsewhere um it just annoys me stuff like that it's not really hard is it <coughs> so I had to go back to do it myself but then in the process I realized that um in addition to being out of citric acid I'm also out of paper stock so I have printed as many as I could but that's not going to be enough that's not even gonna label everything that's hanging up there at the moment so in addition to citric acid I'll be buying some cardstock tomorrow to print some more um, so that's another job for tomorrow and also I cannot find like I don't know if you were my you know sellotape dispenser like where would you be right now because I cannot find it so I have like a roll of sellotape so I just secure it into place initially before I attach the um, sometimes these little um, yarn ties just are in the most awkward in the most awkward way let's just turn that round make it look pretty um there yes yeah, so I have a roll of sellotape and luckily it's the kind of tape that I can just um, tear and stick that on but I also can't find my dispenser I don't know um, that's that's something else to worry about or maybe something else I'll pick up tomorrow um, but yes so um, other than that progress is going well in terms of the amount of stuff I want to take and getting stuff done um, and I think I feel a little bit less stressed than Yarndale because I ta I'm taking considerably less hand dyed yarn with me um, I'm taking a fair amount of some of my commercial yarns mo mostly kind of um, Lang and Chopper with me and I think that will work very well um, I haven't been able to do as many stitch markers as I would like I was sitting yesterday cutting all my try on tubes to size I mean that's another thing that is like completely done kind of in house here at the moment they come on um, I used to buy them on like small wheels and um, as time goes by those wheels have been getting bigger and bigger so you just need to find you know an hour put an audio book on get the scissors out get your measure out and just sit down and 
snipped them off um, and then obviously I put them into little screw lit tins with the sticker on and I put them all away but saying that as I was tidying up the desk um, oh god a bit of glare um, I found an empty one so um, stuff like that really really bugs me so I'm just going to make up an extra pair just to get that last tin full so they'll be coming with me I um, that little jumper I was knitting is coming along it will definitely not be done but that is fine I think it'll be done to the extent that you know I've finished kind of the neck um, and I've completed the first arm I'm sort of on with the second arm so if I can just get it finished that far and then block it that far and then have it on try on tubes to use that as a bit of a display um yeah I think I think that'll work that'll work really well um but yeah other than that I just feel I feel pretty tired to be honest and I think I think tonight is going to be pizza night which makes me very happy um so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to carry on doing some labeling until I have at least run out of these so I feel like you know I have done as much as I could um, and then make my shopping list for tomorrow um, also if you've been to the shop I know a couple of people have commented um, there's a lot of colors of the Stylecraft Special DK out at the moment and there is a reason for that and that is um, that stuff is produced in Turkey under license um, and obviously Turkey had that um, was impacted by the earthquake a while ago and the reality is just that the ports are in quite a mess and they just cannot get the stuff out of the country at the moment it's just not a priority um, quite understandably but that does mean we're seeing huge um, kind of supply issues we, we, we're seeing the impact of that um, and even the bigger, you know, even the big online um, online retailers, you know, who usually have, you, you know, they keep thousands of balls in one color in stock. Um, they are running down. They can't provide sort of um, certain popular um, blanket packs and that sort of thing. It, it, it's just the nature of it at the moment. Um, getting aid in and out um, is obviously a main the main concern at the moment. Um, so having said that, um, I think Stylecraft is sort of looking at alternative ways of getting stuff across, um, possibly by road rather than kind of, you, you know, relying on the ports. Um, but yeah, so we're waiting. It's kind of a waiting game. They've been really good in updating us and stuff, but it, it just is what it is. So if you come in and there's a lot of gaps in the shelves, that's why. Um, so I shall love you and leave you. Thanks for tuning in. I hope um, you've enjoyed my rumblings. Um, I'm going to carry on and then I'll go and order pizza. And then I'm going to go to the shop tomorrow and hopefully meet lots of lovely people there tomorrow. Um, so yes, thank you very much. Take care, everyone. And I shall see you all very soon. Take care. Bye.